Most of the literature I've read is you want it to be somewhere around 50 or 60 of the 25 hydroxy. Now there's also an active form of vitamin D. It's called 125 dihydroxy. And certain patients may need both types of vitamin D checked if you're hypothyroid, if you have kidney disease or autoimmune diseases. Let me tell you, the active form of vitamin D, and I've seen this many, many times. A patient will come in, their 25 hydroxy is low, and they're on, they're taking vitamin D supplements, and I check their 125 dihydroxy. If you have an immune system that is overstimulated, your body will try to turn off that immune system. And how will it turn it off? By making vitamin D in the form of the 125 dihydroxy. That's the active form. So if you have an autoimmune disease, or if you're hypothyroid, or if you have kidney diseases, you may want to have more than one of these levels checked. In kidney disease, more likely you'd see a high 25 and a very low 125. One, I'm sorry, 1 comma 25, okay? Because your kidneys are the ones that convert that. That's where that happens. So that person may need extra vitamin D to push their, or they may, may need to take a special form of vitamin D called calcitriol, which is the active form. So you really need to know in certain cases what you're doing. But this is an extraordinarily important hormone. Hormone. It is a hormone. It, it's not even really a vitamin. It was, it's mislabeled as a vitamin. Um, but uh, it's, it's extraordinarily important and so many people are deficient in it. And again, the most common cause is lack of sunlight. It's virtually impossible to obtain sufficient vitamin D from your diet. I guess if you lived on just seafood and ate the livers from the fish, you could possibly get enough vitamin D. But that would be about the only way that I, that I understand that you could do that. So clearly, we were meant to be getting our vitamin D from the sun. It's the safest, it's the best. And not only that, you get the sunlight, which has other positive effects. It's more than just vitamin D that's important. So there's very few forms. There's salmon, tuna, mackerel, and the liver oils. Uh, there's small amounts found in beef, liver, cheese, egg yolks. We do have some fortified foods. And there's some other foods like breakfast cereals and orange juice and other food products where they'll add vitamin D in there. So we have come to the end of the talk. However, I will be uh, taking questions if anybody has any questions. Quick question on uh, vitamin D. If you take a supplement, you see like that it says D3. Is that what you're looking for, the D, the D3? Yes. Vitamin D3. Right. Yes. Um, that's cholecalciferol. Yeah, that's the 25-hydroxy that's the vitamin D, actually. It's not the active form. Some doctors will, will prescribe that. They, some doctors will actually prescribe the calcitriol, the active form. Most people can convert the D3 to the active form. But again, if you have kidney, severe kidney disease, you may need the calcitriol instead. How do you get the sunlight in winter months is a good question. And, and the answer is that, that you, it's hard to. And in fact, the most common time to have vitamin D deficiency would be at the, at the end of the winter. We can store vitamin D in our bodies. And so you need to get enough sun during the summer months and, and also try to get outside in the sun in the light in the winter. But for areas like this, a tanning booth is, is probably not a terrible idea to do that. But you take advantage of the sunlight in the, in the seasons that it's available. You know, unfortunately, we spend so much of our time indoors. Um, and also bear in mind that if you're behind glass, okay, the glass will absorb the UVB. It will allow the UVA to get through, but the UVB is what you really need. So sitting in a greenhouse will not help you. Driving around in your car with the windows closed will not help you. It'll aid, that could age your skin, but it won't increase your vitamin D. Question. There are so many different ones on the market. Vitamin D on the market? All kinds of, no, all kinds of vitamins. There's so many different things. And? Is there anything that is better than what we have on the market? 
Okay, so the question is, you know, Doc, what should I do? How do I choose my nutritional supplementation? And my answer to you would be, let the buyer beware. You really need to know what you're doing when you purchase these things. Most supplements are really designed to do one thing, and that's sell. A lot of companies will use the cheapest materials out there, put it in a fancy package, tell you that it's good for this, good for that, because they want you to buy it. Um, and don't get me wrong, there are a lot of good products in the market, but you really need to know what you're doing. And I can't just give you a carte blanche on that. You know, um, If you were my patient, on the other hand, then you would have access to that information. I'm not trying to be, oh, okay. I'm not trying to hide information from you, but I can't just give you generic information because everybody's different. Um, if you were to call my office and ask for a, a um, specific multivitamin, we can give you a recommendation for that. Yes, ma'am. I know some people go to the factory and they see how the product is produced, that the supplement is produced. Um, some people look at the shipping and how far it has to travel. Um, do you find in general that certain companies have across the board good quality? Or is it certain companies are noted for this supplement, other companies are noted for that supplement? Okay, so the question is, how do I choose a supplement company that I can, that I can um, feel confident in and trust in? And I, I, I use a bunch of different companies, and I, I pick certain products for some and certain products from others. And how do I know which products to use? First of all, I'm not going to deal with a company if I don't have any faith in them. I want to deal with companies. In general, the companies that I deal with um, sell directly to doctors and only, and only medical practitioners, so they're pharmaceutical grade in general. Um, and then when it comes to specific products, there you really have to know what you're dealing with. I may call up a company or ask them for literature. Um, are you achieving blood levels? You know, what is your purity? What kind of fillers are you using, et cetera? But you want your products to be pharmaceutical grade. Um, you want them to have minimal amounts of fillers, you know, other stuff that's in there and to hold the pill together, for example, or to keep it preserved or to give it a color or to give it a taste, you want to have those as minimal as possible. That's a very good question. So, the, so it would be maybe safer to go with a doctor who's investigated different supplements, and are they allowed to sell the vitamins to their patients? Yes, doctors are allowed to, to dispense these or provide these for, for their patients, yes. Yes? Yeah, I get rather confused, or I'm still rather confused, about the vitamin D that is, you can have a low D3, the 25 hydroxy, but a very toxic 1, 25? Yes. I don't understand what you're, what you're trying to tell us. There's a precursor form of vitamin D. There's many, many different forms. Whoops, I went the wrong way. Okay. So let's go back to the slide. So in our skin, we have cholesterol, okay? That sound, it's surrounding every cell membrane in our body, by the way. It's not just in our skin, but cholesterol is part of every cell in our body. It's very important. That's why if your LDL is zero, you're not going to be having a conversation with anybody. But this, this, the cholesterol within your skin is special because that's the only cholesterol in your body that can be exposed to light. Anything below the skin is too deep. So that cholesterol within the skin cells, and it's only the couple top layers there, is changed from cholesterol or 7-dehydrocholesterol to what they're calling here on the slide pre-vitamin D. Then that vitamin D goes into your bloodstream and it goes through your liver and it gets transformed into another form of vitamin D. That's a 25-hydroxy. And then it goes to your kidneys, where it is transformed into 125-dihydroxy vitamin D. So you can measure the levels of the different forms of vitamin D in your blood. But just because the 25-hydroxy is low, that doesn't mean the 125-hydroxy is, is low also. They're, they're two, not that they're totally different or totally independent of each other, 
but the immune system uses vitamin D to be, it, it the, vitamin D controls the immune system. So actually, I'll measure vitamin D levels and both of those at the same time to get a view of the patient's immune system. And if I see a very, very high 125 dihydroxy level at the same time that the 25 hydroxy is low, I know that patient is, is having a problem with their immune system. There's two other causes for this. Hypothyroidism can actually cause a shift in that, not as much as the immune system. And excessive growth hormone, either because you have a growth hormone secreting tumor or you're taking a, you know, growth hormone exogenously could do that. But most commonly, it's the immune system that will do this. And so I find it important, and I'll always at least check once the, the ratio between those two things. Well, the test is sort of given on a regular basis now. Is the 25. Is the 25. 25 hydroxy, yes. You should ask the doctor if they can do, do the one comma 25. At the same time, you could ask, they may say that's over the utilization, you don't need to do that, I've never heard of this before, this has never been proven, blah, 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 blah. But if you do a Google, write this down, on activate, activated macrophages, put that in as one of your activated macrophages, which is a type of cell, I hope that everybody at home is doing this too, activated macrophages and put in 125 dihydroxy vitamin D, you will find a bunch of research that shows that activated ma macrophages will actually produce 125 dihydroxy vitamin D. Yeah, and how this is connected to your immune system. You'll see all sorts, a whole new world will open up for you. Okay, so if we have no more questions, then um, I'd like to thank everybody for coming tonight. I'd like to thank Edison Library for having me here tonight. I'd like to thank Mr. Ed for coming tonight, and um, if anybody has any questions afterwards, uh, feel free to come up to me. If anybody wants a free phone consult, give my office a call and schedule a free phone consult, and um, I can spend a few minutes with you on the phone. Okay, well thank you again. Thank you.